Hello everyone, and welcome back to Rich History. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at World War II dress uniforms. The first thing to consider is that in the early war period, the doctrine was different concerning uniforms and their roles. The army thought that it was beneficial for the dress uniform and field uniform to be the same, which was the case during World War I. As field trials went on, though, they began to believe that the field and dress uniforms should be separate and serve different roles. Thus, the first dress uniform of World War II was born, the service jacket. The service jacket had been adopted in 1926, but with modifications in 1942, which took away some of its field performance aspects, it officially became a dress uniform. The service jacket was a four-pocket wool tunic that was tailored similar to men's suits of the era. In 1942, the garrison cap was made standard issue, replacing the visor cap, though the visor was still available for private purchase throughout the war and was extensively worn. The garrison cap had lining on the edges called piping, which reflected a branch depending on the color, which can be seen in this diagram. Another random detail is that early war, ties were typically a dark brown color, but were replaced generally later in the war by khaki ties. Towards the end of the war, leadership in the European theater of operations wanted to adopt a field uniform closer to the British battle dress, and what resulted was the olive wrap wool field jacket, more commonly known as the Ike jacket. Similarly to the service coat, the Ike jacket was originally intended for field use, but was found to be better suited for use as a dress uniform. The Ike had two pockets and came up a lot higher than the service coat, being cut off around the waist. A later model was developed in 1950, which had numerous changes, including non-defined cuffs. On both jackets, for enlisted men, two discs were worn on the collar. One was the U.S. pen, while the other depended on the branch of service. For this jacket, the pen depicts a castle for the Army Corps of Engineers. For this one, it's two cross flags for the Signal Corps, and for this one, it's crossed rifles for the infantry. Various awards and decorations were worn above the left breast pocket, such as ribbons, combat infantry badges, or jump wings. Additionally, the unit patch would be worn on the left shoulder, and rank chevrons were worn on the sleeves in the middle of the upper arm. On the bottom of the left sleeve, overseas bars and service bars were placed. Overseas bars, the straight lines, were given for every six months that the soldier spent overseas, while service bars represented every three years the soldier spent in the service. Finally, above the right pocket was the ruptured duck patch, which indicated honorable discharge from military service. To wrap it up, here's a photo where you can see all the elements. Discs on the collar, unit patch on the left shoulder, ranks on the upper arm, awards on the left pocket, ruptured duck on the right, and bars on the bottom of the left sleeve. Well, that about wraps it up. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful, and if anyone has any questions or comments, please let me know. See you next time.